Howdy. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at thin airfoil theory, which specifically is the representation of an airfoil as a vortex sheet. So starting off with some basics, if we have some airfoil, it can be defined uh, through a cord line and a camber line. In general, we will define the upper and lower surface of our airfoil from the cord line. So our upper surface will be some z u of x. Uh, and our lower surface is going to be a z l of x. Our camber line, we're going to call z c of x. Then finally, we're going to have some thickness, which we're just going to call a t of x. Also, in this case, x runs from 0 to c. So this distance is going to be c. Just for a couple more definitions, let's go ahead and mathematically define the camber line and the thickness. So the camber line is going to be 1 half of zu of x plus zl of x. Our thickness is going to be just zu of x minus zl of x. Now, the representation as a vortex sheet hinges on the assumption that our airfoil is thin. And what that means is that our thickness in every x location is going to be much less than the cord. If we have that, we can just view this entire thing as a vortex sheet along the camber line. And what I mean by a vortex sheet is that at every point along the camber line, some vorticity is present. Now, in chapter 3, we talked about a point vortex, which was a singularity at a single point which caused some velocity, v theta. And we could define v theta as negative gamma over 2 pi r. Likewise, with our vortex sheet, we can subdivide this into a whole bunch of small panels of size d psi. And each of these panels is going to have some strength per unit length gamma, lowercase gamma, and will likewise cause some velocity at a point v theta. And in this case, we want to use a differential v theta because we're only looking at part of the um, part of the vortex sheet. We're not looking at the entire thing. So our d v theta in this case is going to be a negative d capital gamma, which will be the entire uh, circulation caused by this portion of the panel, again divided by 2 pi r. So what exactly is this differential circulation? Uh, it's just simply going to be our gamma per unit length times some length, which is our d psi. Now, the tricky part comes in that for every piece of this vortex sheet, the theta is going to be different, which means that our representation of d v theta is going to be different. So for instance, if we're looking at some points up here, if we call this d psi 1, then it's going to cause a v theta or d v theta in this direction. Now if we have some other part of this, 
then again, we can draw a line. So this is our R1, this is our R2, and in this case, it's gonna cause a dV theta two in this direction. So as we move along in our airfoil, the position changes relative to the point we're interested in calculating. And so each of these causes a slightly different uh, direction of the uh, velocity. It induces a slightly different direction in the velocity. <clears throat> so the way that we can see it say this is that our dv, if you want to put it in this way, is equal to our dv theta in the e theta direction, but now our e theta is a function of xi and x and y where this point up here is going to be our x, y location. So obviously, this is a very complicated way of doing things. Um, we're going to be simplifying this down uh, coming up. Uh, in general, our entire velocity at some point x and y is going to be the integral from 0 to c, so across the entire chord, of our dv, which is going to be the integral, or the negative integral from 0 to c, of gamma, which is a function of c, over 2 pi r. And if we wanted to, we could write this as a function of x, y, and c. And then we'll have some d psi, and then we need the direction. So this will be a e theta, and e theta is going to be a function of xi, x, and y.